Hey everyone, we got a uh, Joe Lyons here from the Automator with Isaiah's Bays. One of these days, I'll right. and uh, we were working on this script. We we think we have a very cool script here. We'll be releasing pretty soon for helping people. And in it, we're sending messages to other auto hockey scripts, and we identified this really yeah. interesting bug. Why don't you explain, Isaiah, what's going on? Yeah. So um, line one hundred forty-seven here. Uh, we're using uh, sending messages to other scripts, and there are several messages that you can send to them that, for example, you can edit. When you right-click on a script, you have certain actions, like, for example, to edit, exit the application, or, you know, that's when you have, like, a, the standard menu. You have these uh, options, like, reload the script, edit the script, you know, pause, suspend, or exit. Those messages, uh, you can send them yourself whenever you want. In our case, that's what we're doing in line 147. And as usual, whenever you send these kind of messages, you want to kind of like verify that they have been received. And that's why I have from lines uh, 149 to 154, uh, the, I just check what the error level is. Send message, what it does is that it posts the message to the program and then waits for the program to acknowledge that it received the message. And if there's any issues with this process, uh, error level is set to fail. And now uh, we just added this coding here and we have been testing. But the funny thing is that what we noticed is that sometimes we, well, very often, by the way, we send uh, the message, like for example, an edit message, I get the tooltip saying that I could not set, I could not send the message. But funnily enough, uh, in this case, it didn't work. But sometimes I do get the message, but the message actually worked. So here's the deal. When I send the edit message, the script is going to open the default editor on your computer with the script source, right? And as you can see, that's what happened here. I had the notepad window which is the default editor right now. Which um, we don't recommend. But, <laughs> right, <laughs> we don't recommend that one, right. But um, if you noticed, I did get the tooltip saying that the message didn't work, but basically, yes, it did work. So, and we have been trying to figure out what is going on. In this case, I didn't get the message. So error level was not set to fail, but I also didn't get the edit <laughs> window. So it didn't work. But I didn't get the message. You know, you got the tooltip. I saw it. Is that what you're oh, saying? Uh, I, I didn't notice. Yeah. Oh, right okay. on the, the scroll bar. So the color blended right in. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, it was there. Oh, uh, okay. I, I didn't notice. But sometimes, and this is the thing, what we're noticing is that the message, oh, here it is. Cool. Not yeah. send the message. But I did get the message correctly. Right. So for some reason, out of hotkey is having issues with. Uh, this send message sending set setting the error level to fail when it is actually not failing now i am as i'm not as i don't know the internals of how this function is actually working i could just simply speculate what is going on and uh, what i do know is that the error level is set to fail when the command times out because there's kind of like a time frame in which the send message actually waits for acknowledgement. If the acknowledgement is not sent within that time frame, then it's going to set error level to fail, even though it seems to me that it is getting the message. That's the most likely scenario that the command has a very narrow timing for sure. how much it's going to wait for it, right? Now, here at the end, I think that has to do with it. Uh, with uh, let me see something. This is exclude text. No, that those parameters are not right. So if you can open up the help file, can you? Open? So let's go ahead and do that. And While we're in something. here, um, when you're on that, do me a favor and also explain how you knew that you couldn't use the try catch approach. Right. So most most, I'm not 100% certain that you can't mm -hmm. because in other, oh, there it is. I knew that it was. So here, the last parameter is timeout. Ah. Now I set it to one second 
And that's probably what is going on. The one second time frame oh. is too low for what we were talking about. So this is what, and actually in, in, in HK Studio, the parameters are not showing up the timeout there. But I, I knew like, hold on, that probably is the timeout. That, that's not exactly what, right. Um, about the um, throwing an exception and why can't I use the try catch? Most uh, commands that can throw an exception, if you go, for example, oh, say, for example, you use one of these guys. I think this one throws an exception. When you go to the remarks, so most of the most of the most of the um, uh, commands. Uh, in the old versions, they used error level, right? But the the more the newest uh, versions of AutoHotKey, you will notice that they have a section that says error handling, and then it says this command is able to throw an exception on failure, and this is what you're looking for. If you see that this command throws an exception on failure, then you can use the try catch block, and basically you can. In the try block, you can have a lot of commands. And if one of them throws an exception, you can perform some actions. Now, sometimes it is not in its own block like this. It is actually in the remarks section. Wherever you can read the error level, that's where that's going to appear. So it's usually in the same location. Now, what happens with um, the send or post messages, right? Um, let me see. Now they say that they, they are able to throw an exception and failure. I don't know why I was convinced that they couldn't, but yeah, they can. But that's um, I, I, it seems to me that I didn't read it, right? It seems to me that I didn't see it, but yeah, but that's how you know it. If you have a block that says error level or anything that has to do with error handling, you could just go ahead and read and you will see that they say that they can uh, throw an exception. For some reason, it's, you know, sometimes your mind just blocks and you don't read something, no, yeah. but yeah, they no, do. But because when you said it, I didn't mention it when you talked about it earlier, but I'm like, I thought everything could, you know, use the throw and exception thing. So yes, so like yeah, so some from can. from version 1.104 uh, up from there on, I think all of the commands do. Okay. Uh, well, or most of the commands, yeah, but maybe do. there's those commands that set error level, the ones that set error level, they do okay. usually were switched to also handle exceptions. Now, for some reason, I don't know why I was thinking that I couldn't, but the, the way how I would try this then, again, as, as I was telling you, I was suspecting that it had to do with a timeout, and I think it is. Now I just set up the timeout to three seconds. Right. The one problem with this approach, and that's the reason why I didn't set a timeout so high, is because then you you slow the script a little bit because it has to wait for it, right? So if your computer is really slow or something, it will wait the three seconds before actually continuing executing. And you don't want that. So I, I set it up to one second. But my problem then is that the command times out a lot, giving false results. So one second is too low. I would try with three, and then I would try with two seconds until I find a very nice, you know, well, number. You know, in um, who were we talking to the other day? We did a call where someone on their computer. Well, I think it was because it was your with your your current computer, your laptop was much slower, yes. right? And so yeah. we we shouldn't like on my computer. It's a pretty fast computer, right? So we don't yes. want to use mine as the way to set it for everybody, right? Because exactly something to think about. Cool. So what we want to test exactly it. We'll see if that actually. Yeah, so this right now should not give me this fail as often as it was doing it, right? So because I just set the timeout to a little higher. Um, Sorry, my Alexa took off playing for some reason. <laughs> okay, so in this case, uh, what we do is that we could just reload the script, make sure that it's running the latest version. Uh, let's go ahead and do the edit control, the, the edit message again to any of those now it should wait a little bit longer but again you see that it says like could not send the message anyways yeah even though i do have a higher timeout do me a favor also increase that the 152 sleep just so it 
that error is a little bit longer. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. So design. let's set yeah. it to three seconds as well. Yeah, thank you. Right. So let's just, and I, I, I should just put that on the top of the screen or some somewhere else so that it's more we, we don't have to follow it, right? right? So it is just like, I don't know, 100 by 100, and that at least is going to bring it down up here on the left or something, which would allow me to not have to be looking for it. Well, especially right on that scroll bar, that's, it's just a, the colors are so <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it, it just, it just, uh, it just blends in so, so nicely, right? <laughs> so in any case, if I hit the edit, I am getting the fail here. Interesting. But I am getting the window back right. here. So again, I am setting the error, this timeout a little bit higher. And I think I am doing it right because we do have a uh, message, uh, W, L, then control, then win title, then win text, exclude is usually really good. title, exclude title, and then the timeout. But take, so, take yeah, one off. That of, is, I'm just curious. Take one comma off. Right. It is it is good at telling you where you are. It's usually really good at it. Yeah. Right. So after that one, I put one more comma. And now we are outside of the command, which uh for whatever reason he doesn't have right, exactly. So 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 he doesn't have that parameter I mean, set up, I but yeah, that's the one that has to do with the timeout. Yeah. So in any case, I am setting the timeout correctly. It is it is being okay. Now even though it tells me like I changed something. Let's try it anyways. Let's just make sure that I didn't probably have a, 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 co a an extra coma or something like that, which I really doubt, but now I go ahead and do one of those guys, edit. I got the messaging here, but it is not even waiting the three seconds. You see that? That's a great point. Right, yeah, it is just like showing up right away. So right. Right. do which that. version so probably the version of auto hotkey that you have uh, because this very close to it timeout let's go ahead and verify because what happens is that the this timeout parameter is is but yeah but yeah of course you have to have it so oh hold on milliseconds to wait <laughs> you, have to, you have to really 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 yeah, you see right. <laughs> that's the reason you have to really 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 <laughs> read awesome. oh man still, and this is the other thing so yeah your catch over the uh the thing happening right away right that was that's the the real thing that right so that's that's when, when experience experience comes into play because whenever we use this thing and it is interesting <laughs> because most of the timeouts for, the, 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 for example for message boxes for message boxes, yeah. So for message boxes, you do have a timeout parameter out here, and that is in seconds. Yes, I, yeah. So that is something you, you see. Yeah. That is something that is kind of like annoying. Yeah. In one command, the, you do uh, have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, um, there's one other one that the the clip weight is also in seconds, right? In seconds. In, so like, come on. We, Why? yeah. Why is this one in milliseconds? Well, I would understand that this one is in milliseconds because sure. the send message command uh, is probably, right. you, you get the thing yeah. instantaneously, but it throws you off because you're doing something in, in a way that you're used to doing it in every single other command. And now, uh, you know, come on. <laughs> this one is in milliseconds. Why, yeah. Um, Why so yeah. To be consistent. Yeah. Yes. So that when you are not sure your guess is the best guess that you could have done. So if I have 10 commands that have um, um, seconds, then yeah, go for it with seconds in the new one. That's all. Now here, okay, now we didn't get the message, right? Well, we so made now, it in three milliseconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so probably now we are not gonna be getting this error any longer. Right, there it is. Because now we're using the command correctly. And that's, that's I like that this happened because even though you are somebody who has right. uh, how good you are. coded a lot. Yeah. Yeah, so you, it doesn't matter how much you are. There's a lot of things that you have to pay attention to the details. And me, I do not use the send 
message command that often. The ones that I do use, for example, is clip wait. I do use message box and others that use seconds. So I'm used to that. If you're used to something and then just from the sudden you read this command, oh, it has a timeout. You think it's going to work the same as all the other timeouts that you have seen, but it is not. So yeah, it doesn't matter how, how good you are. These kind of errors can be you know, part of your code. The only thing is that you have to read. You have to read very carefully. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. Yeah, I'm I'm, um, I'm I'm terrible at it. So trust me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's how it goes. Awesome. Well, well, at least now we figured that one out. Um, I, I yeah, think, we figured that one out. I think in another week or so we'll have this script. We're going to keep testing it. We'll release it. But it's it's pretty cool. Yeah. You can have one icon in your system tray, and and it can open or edit or reload. You know, any script that's running. So it's it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is. It actually creates this little hub here that gives you a list of everything that is running on your computer right now that is an out of hotkey script, and then it gives you access to each of them um, having the default commands on them. Because for example, one of the scripts that we have down here, say for example, the Windows snipping tool, uh, we do not have the edit uh, script in, right. the, in the main right. menu, because usually you're not gonna be editing it. But what about if I do want to edit it? Yeah, or if you uh, go to the hub and click it, you'll see there's a, a menu, Joe menu one, that doesn't have a, yeah. a system icon, right? It it's, doesn't have a system icon. It doesn't have a GUI, for example. Right. And so how would there you wouldn't be any other. Yeah. yeah. How, how would you be able to actually access it or uh, reload it, reload it, exit it, suspend it, you know, and even go to the folder, the script folder and see where, where is that thing launching from? You know, those are kind of like little details that if the, the script does not have a standard menu, you, you will not have some actions and you none of those and uh, scripts is going to have the... See if you agree with this, Isaiah. I think a lot of people don't hide the system tray icon for that very reason. Like, well, crap. Yeah. I want to be able to do something with it. And you have to remember to embed yeah. a hotkey in it and be able to remember what that is to pull it up. Or you can have like... Right. Tray, right. Um, so, or now... Yeah, exactly. Or where it is and right-click the icon. But... Uh, this is a very simple approach. You can see I have a lot. Always, this is what's normally running on my computer, right? <laughs> I, I got you know, a lot of scripts I have running. Yeah. Right but you don't see them in my system tray because I hide, I'd say, half of them at least. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but with this little tool, then you still have access to them anyways. So, Cool. All right. Well, thank you, man. Awesome. We're going to be talking later.